everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. This time we're going to be taking a look at a real classic, Super Star Wars for the Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, a classic. Which is, uh, you know, based on the original Star Wars film, A New Hope. Right. But um, we're going to be using some articles from the Pixels and Wikipedia today okay. to sort of unpack this game and see if we can answer one big question. Is Super Star Wars a fun challenge or just, uh, you know, unfairly difficult? Yeah, you know, it's funny you should say that because one of the things that the Pixels article actually asks mm -hmm. is who is this game even made for? Yeah. Because, I mean, Star Wars is for kids, right? Yeah. But was Super Star Wars on the Super Nintendo, like, designed for kids? That's a great question, especially when you think about when this came out. Right. Like, in the early 90s. Early 90s. It feels like a lot of games back then were just oh, yeah. so much harder than games are today. Absolutely. And you know what? There's actually a term for this kind of game design philosophy back then. Okay. It's called artificial difficulty. Artificial difficulty. It basically means that the game was made harder. Not through clever level design or anything like that. Okay. But by just, like, giving you very few lives mm -hmm. or really clunky controls or just throwing, like, a zillion enemies at you at once. Yeah, it's just like a war of attrition. Yeah, it really was. It was like a test to see how long you could, like, last, you know. Yeah, and it's so interesting how different that philosophy is. It is. From how we think about games now, you exactly. know. We expect to have difficulty settings and tutorials and checkpoints. Yeah. All these things to make the game more accessible. Like, you know, back in the Super Nintendo era, there weren't really any of those things, right? You had to just rely on trial and error. Yeah. And memorizing enemy patterns and figuring out the sometimes, shall we say, unique control schemes right like, or just like pumping quarters into an arcade machine until you somebody. got it so so many quarters so many quarters gone but yeah. so so worth it though right oh yeah those were good times yeah so okay so the pixels article is really interesting because it it actually breaks down a lot of reasons why oh, yeah. super star wars is considered so hard oh. and and some of them i i kind of forgot about yeah um one of the things that the author mentions is uh you know how like Enemies would just spawn Wait, directly oh. over a pit. Oh, is the worst. As you're trying to jump across. Classic example of artificial difficulty right there. Yeah, that's, I mean, talk about bad timing. Right? It's, it's like they didn't even want you to, to have a chance. And then, like, okay, so another thing I'd completely forgotten about was like, okay, so you're playing, you're like, okay, I'm going to take out this droid, right? You shoot the droid. And then, like, it explodes, uh -huh. and there's shrapnel That's, that can it, damage you. It was, it was brutal. So it's like, okay, it punishes you for, for actually hitting your target. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> oh, you think you're being all clever taking this out, huh? Well, take this. <laughs> and it's like the game, yeah, the game is always trying to, like, keep you off balance. Keep you on your toes, yeah. For but never let you feel too comfortable, even when you're doing well. You know what I mean? Totally. Uh, and then on top of all of that, like, you can't run and shoot at the same time. Oh, my gosh. I'd forgotten about that. Right. Yeah. You're just like a sitting duck, you know. Just inching along while blaster fire is coming at you. <sighs> yeah. yeah. And don't even get me started on those disappearing health pickups. Oh, tell me about it. You see one, you're like, oh, my God, yes. I need that. And you go to grab it, and your character is like, Mosey's over there. At a snail's pace. Yeah, like, it's no big deal. And then, poof, it's gone. You're like, no, come on. Yeah, it's brutal. It's just mean, right? <laughs> it's like the game is laughing at you. Yeah. It's like, haha. Yeah. Too slow. Ooh. Yeah, so it's like it's like you've got all these things working against you, right? Mm. You're under constant pressure. The controls are, you know, let's just say they're not the most responsive. They take some get used to. And even when you get a chance to heal, it's like the game is like working against you. Right. It's like, nope, you don't get to heal. Better luck next time. And on top of all of that, you're, you know, you're trying to navigate these incredibly difficult levels. Oh, yeah. Some of the level designs in this game are just brutal. Yeah, you've got tiny platforms that are constantly moving. Bottomless pits everywhere you look. Yeah, and if you miss a jump... Oh, you're you're going for a long ride. Yeah, you're done. Back to the beginning. I can only imagine how many controllers were sacrificed to the gaming gods. Oh, so many. Back in the day, trying to beat this game. It was a real test of patience, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, but, okay, so we've talked about the platforming, but this game also did something really interesting with, with Mode 7. Mode 7, yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, Mode 7 was this special graphics mode on the Super Nintendo that let developers... Yeah. Kind of create these pseudo 3D effects. Right. Like it wasn't true 3D. Right. But it it was pretty darn close. Yeah. Like think about the Death Star trench run. Right. Oh yeah, that was iconic. Or or the land speeder chase. So cool. 
those levels use mode seven to give you this feeling of actually moving in three dimensions. And for the time, it was like mind blowing. Yeah, it was like, whoa, how are they doing this on a Super Nintendo? Right, it was like nothing we'd ever seen before. Yeah, but but here's the thing, going from these intense 2D platforming levels to suddenly piloting a vehicle yeah. in these pseudo 3D environments felt really jarring. Yeah, it was kind of a sudden shift, wasn't it? Like one minute you're Luke Skywalker, you know, running and gunning, dodging blaster fire. The mm -hmm. next minute you're Han Solo weaving through canyons in the Millennium Falcon. Oh, a different gameplay. Yeah, a totally different set of <laughs> controls to master. Yeah, you really had to like switch gears mentally yeah. to adapt to those different styles of play. And it's, I mean, think about it. If we were playing a modern game today yeah. and we were like seamlessly transitioning between like first person shooter to a racing game to a puzzle game. Yeah, all on the same level. Yeah, that would be a lot to process, right? Definitely, even for, like, experienced gamers. Yeah, but back then it was even more surprising because it wasn't really that common, you know? It's true. It was kind of like, whoa, what just happened? Yeah, and not all of those Mode 7 levels were, were created equal. Right. Like uh, that land speeder section, for example. Oh, yeah, that one was tough. Wasn't just about avoiding obstacles. You had to manage your fuel at the same time. Oh, the fuel gauge. So you're you're trying to fly this thing, not crash, shoot enemies. Don't forget the enemies. And keep an eye on your fuel gauge all at the same time. It was a lot to juggle. Like, come on, give me a break. It's like they were trying to test our multitasking skills to the max. And let's not forget that, you know, this is back in the day before in-game tutorials, right? Oh, yeah, those are the days. So you were just kind of thrown into the deep end and expected to figure it all out on your own? Trial by fire. Yeah, it was a completely different era of gaming. It was, it was. That demanded patience and persistence and and a very high tolerance for frustration. Oh, for sure. Speaking of frustration, we can't forget about the boss battles in this game. Oh, the boss battles. That's were just notoriously... Notoriously tough. Yeah, even after you'd like managed to survive the regular levels, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh, you made it through that. Not for the real challenge. Yeah, I'll get ready for this. Yeah, it was like the final exam after a semester of like grueling coursework. You'd finally make it to the boss, you know, heart pounding, palms sweating. Yeah. And then you'd come face to face with this boss who had like, a whole new set of attacks and uh, patterns that you had to like decipher. And it wasn't just about learning their moves, right? Right. You had to execute them perfectly with those, shall we say, responsive controls. Oh yeah. The controls definitely didn't make things any easier. Yeah. And and if you died, which let's be honest, you you were gonna die. Multiple times. Yeah. It was inevitable. You'd lose any of the weapon power ups you collected. Oh yeah, that was rough. Making the next attempt even harder. It's like, oh, you thought you were making progress? Nope. Start <laughs> over, buddy. Talk about insult to injury. Yeah, I mean can you imagine if a game did that today? Oh my god. Like you die and you lose all your upgrades? People would people would riot. People would lose their minds. Yeah. But back then, that was just part of the challenge. It's like the game was really testing not just your skills, but your patience. Yeah, your your ability to not throw the controller through the TV. It's it's almost like the developers were like, We dare you to finish this. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of people did. Yeah. And I think there's a real sense of like accomplishment. Oh yeah. That comes with conquering a game as as challenging sure. as Super Star Wars. You know, it's like earning a badge of honor. Oh yeah, absolutely. In the retro gaming world. Yeah, it's like you you survived something. You survived. You went through a trial. Exactly. <laughs> but okay, so we've talked about how hard it is. Yeah. But let's let's talk about the story. Okay. Because uh this game came out in nineteen ninety two. Right. Which was a good chunk of time after the original Star Wars film. Yeah, I mean, in A New Hope came out in, what, 77? Yeah, so it wasn't exactly, like, a hot new release. Right, so they had some time to, like, you know, play around with the source material. And they definitely took some creative liberties. They did. That Nintendo Life Review were looking at. Yeah. Uh, actually points out a couple of these... Uh, liberties, yeah. Creative liberties, as as they say. Uh, yeah. There's one part in the game where Luke goes on a rampage through a Jawa sand crawler. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And, like, wipes out every Jawa in sight. Yeah, that was, that was a bit of a head-scratcher. In the film, it's the Empire that yeah. does that, not Luke. Yeah, they, they definitely took some liberties with that scene. Yeah, it's like, Luke, I am your father, and you just committed a Jawa genocide. Not exactly the heroic act we're used to seeing from Luke. 
But but it does. I mean, putting the Jawa massacre aside for a second, okay, it does raise the question of like how much creative license, yeah, is acceptable when you're adapting like a story into a game. Yeah, it's a tricky balance, right? Right. You want to stay true to the spirit of the original work, of course, but you also have to make sure that the game is you know fun to play. Right. Exactly. And like they had to they had to translate you know this yeah. this epic space opera into you know a side scrolling action game. Right. Not an easy task. Yeah. It's it's not a one to one thing. Exactly. I... So maybe maybe they felt like they had to, you know, spice things up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe blasting through a sand crawler full of Jawas was their way of... Adding some action. Yeah, making it more action-packed. Yeah, it is interesting to look back and, and see how, like, those early developers... Yeah. ...approached these adaptations. Yeah, yeah. Because it was it was a time of, like, experimentation. Oh, for sure. And sometimes that led to some, some interesting... Yeah. ...and occasionally head-scratching creative choices. Yeah, for sure. Um, but speaking of looking back... Do it. Uh, the author of the Pixels article actually mentions yeah. how they they found Super Star Wars incredibly difficult at first. Oh, yeah. But after playing the sequels, uh -huh. The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi for the Super Nintendo, right. they could actually go back and beat those early levels. Wow. Almost flawlessly. Like they had leveled up. Yeah. Their skills had improved so much. Yeah, it's that that classic gamer experience. It is. Of, of just like... It's like training with Yoda on Dagobah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You struggle at first. Right. But with practice and perseverance, you unlock your full potential. Yeah, and I think that's part of what makes, you know, Super Star Wars so enduring. It is. Even with all of its quirks and, and challenges, you know, it's right. it's a game that rewards dedication. It does. And there's a real sense of satisfaction that comes from, you know, finally overcoming those obstacles. Right. Like, right. you know, it's, it's not a game you can just breeze through. No. You really have to put in the time and effort to get good at it. Yeah, you got to earn it. Which I guess is kind of fitting for a game about, you know, Jedi Knights. Right. You got to go through the trials. Yeah. Become a Jedi Master. Yeah, exactly. So that... And speaking of sequels, I think it's worth pointing out that, you know, Super Star Wars wasn't just this, like, one-off hit. It wasn't. It spawned a whole trilogy of games. Right. They, they did all three original films. Yeah. Which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So even though Super Star Wars might, you know, seem like a relic of a bygone era. Mm-hmm. It actually had a pretty big impact. It did. On gaming history. It paved the way. Yeah. For a whole bunch of Star Wars games that came after it. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I think that speaks to the the enduring appeal uh -huh. of both the Star Wars franchise okay. and of like challenging games in general. Yeah, like people people like a challenge. They do. They do. So, okay, so we've talked about the good the bad uh -huh. and the jaw killing spree. Yeah. We covered a lot of ground. Where where does that leave us? Was Super Star Wars a fun challenge or just a frustrating mess? It's tough to say, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely a product of its time, right? Yeah, it's like a time capsule of early 90s game design. Yeah, you've got those uh, sometimes wonky controls. Yeah. The, uh, the unforgiving difficulty and those wild swings between, like, yeah. completely different styles of gameplay. But then on the other hand, you've got, you know, those... Those groundbreaking visuals, uh, thanks yeah. to Mode Seven. Mode Seven was was really something special. Yeah, yeah. And and let's not forget that that iconic Star Wars music. Oh, the music! It, oh, yeah, hearing those those classic John Williams themes. It just it just added to the whole atmosphere. Oh, for sure. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely added to the experience. Um, I think, even though it could be, you know, really frustrating at times. Right. There is there is a real sense of accomplishment that comes with like oh yeah conquering a game like Super Star Wars yeah it's like you earned your Jedi Master robes through mm -hmm. sheer grit and determination through blood sweat and tears yeah yeah you really you had to put in the time you did. and effort to master this game no doubt about it um so for those of you listening out there mm -hmm. here's here's something to think about okay in a world of you know, in a world of games that are often designed to be, you know, more accessible and more forgiving, right. does does the appeal of a truly challenging experience like Super Star Wars still hold up? That's a good question. Yeah, or is it just a relic of a bygone era? I guess the only way to know for sure is to, you know, 
Dust off that old Super Nintendo. Yeah, dust off that old cartridge, blow on it a few times. Give it a try. And give it a try. See for yourself. Yeah, maybe you'll maybe you'll find it's a fun challenge. Or maybe you'll just end up throwing your controller across the room. Either way. Yeah. It's a it's a fascinating look back. Oh yeah. At a time when games weren't afraid to to really push players yeah. to their limits. Yeah. No hand holding. No hand holding back then. You are on your own, kid. Sink or swim. So until next time, may the force be with you all. 